Now, I'll be honest, what you're witnessing right now, and for the duration of this video, probably, is not somebody who's going to be losing his rag and elated. It's how I think I should feel, but I just, I'm a bit confused. I'm a little bit confused because this is a day that nobody really expected to arrive, you know? What's happened? <laughs> oh man, and the thing is, Unai Emery probably could have done a good job. I'm joking. It's a joke. Don't make jokes, Jamie. So anyway, Charlton Athletic Football Club have been sold by Roland du Chatelet. Oh, okay. <laughs> What's going on? People stopped talking about it, really, because it was such a thing that just never seemed acquaintable. That's not the right word. Acquirable, I think is the right word. It's something that never seemed like it was ever going to happen, you know? It's happened now, and I kind of can't process it. I'm struggling to process it, man. Honestly, I, I, I really can't find the right way to feel. So anyway, we've been a, we've been bought by uh, apparently quite a rich owner. Let's let's put it that way. Let's have a look at the article real quick. East Street Investments have agreed the purchase of Charlton Athletic Football Club. Can anybody remember how they felt? <laughs> it was only this morning when they first saw that tweet. I checked for that tick next to Charlton Athletic to make sure it wasn't a, 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 a one of those dodgy accounts that isn't actually the real account. And you click on it. You go to the official cafc.co.uk website, you sort of go, oh, this is actually real. And then you go, okay, I'm going to read it because it's probably, <laughs> there's probably some sort of catch in there. You go down. We are proud and delighted to announce East Street Investments have agreed the purchase of Charlton Athletic Football Club. And at this point, <laughs> it's fair to say, you sort of go, oh. So anyway, let's have a read. We're privileged to take ownership of such a historic club and it's incredibly exciting to be part of the process of building a fresh future for the fans, loyal club staff and players of Charlton Athletic. Now, from a selfish perspective, now working for Charlton, loyal club staff is what I really wanted to see in there because as much as it was a hideous regime under the previous owner and we all know it, a takeover was frightening, let's be honest, because you think about these new owners coming in potentially sweeping the entire oh my phone's ringing hello <laughs> hello joe what are you doing in bartrams yeah do you know what i'm literally logging in right now let me, if you stay right there i'll have a little look sorry important business call charlton athletic don't know if you know but i work for them so as much as you want a takeover if you work for charlton you also worry, what if they come in and just completely just kill your job? Just get rid of your job or get someone new into your job. So it's good for me and for lots of employees to see that in there. A fresh future for the fans of the loyal club staff. While we may be the club owners, truly we are only the custodians. Now, custodians just means, what does that mean? Define it, please, Google. I'm sure it just means a person who has responsibility for taking care of protecting something. So I like that. Already, you're going to warm to Charlton fans by saying that because fans at Charlton, at any football club, feel like they have ownership of the club. They are the driving force behind a match day. They are the driving force behind sales on merch and presence on social media and spreading word of mouth. Fans are the heartbeat of any football club. Charlton is no different. If anything, Charlton is even more so because of, of the proud history we have. So brilliant that they've said that. The true spirit of this football club rests with the fans. It is nothing without them. Now, what I want to see is a comparison between this article and the one where Roland took over. I don't know, I can't find it anyway. I wanted to compare it to the old one. Someone can do it though. If you if you can access it, I can't be bothered to find it whilst I'm recording the video, but if you can find it, it'll be interesting to see that side by side with the one when Roland took over, to see how positive we would have been about that and how, how we would have spoken about the fans and stuff. The support through some difficult times, both recently and in the past, has been inspirational and we intend to build on that loyalty. Our priority will be immediate contact with fan groups in order that their views play a major role in the club going forward. Again, you're winning the fans over immediately by saying that. We believe the football side of the club is in excellent hands with Lee Boyer and what he and the players have achieved following promotion has been outstanding. We will do everything possible to support Lee's vision and ambitions. So. I think everybody's agreed that the first thing that we need is a 
contract for Taylor and a contract for Lee Boyer. In fact, I should say that in the in the opposite order because Lee Boyer probably would be number one on everyone's list and then getting Lyle Taylor nailed down is the most important football player to get nailed down as well. But Lee Boyer, I think, has just got that irreplaceable sort of feel about him right now. We would like to thank Roland du Châtelet, his team and the directors for helping to facilitate a quick and smooth sale. I'm not sure that Charlton fans would agree it was necessarily quick and smooth since he announced the clubs for sale, but <laughs> however, we'll, 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 that's by and by. They leave the club with solid foundations on which we can invest and build. Now that, that's true, in the, in the last year or so, despite these borderline, not even borderline, offensive outbursts that the previous owner had every now and then. You have to look at the way he's left the club. He still paid the bills. He still just about did the right thing in the summer with, with Bowyer and obviously didn't allow Taylor to get sold. So it was asset acquisition, or sorry, asset maintenance, I should say. You know, he has left the club in a, in a place in which it can move forward. Financially though, I don't know how much these new investors have had to pay Roland over the price of what our club is really worth to, to get that done. I don't know. We have got the Valley though, so we have still got ownership of our stadium, which was one thing that people were worried about with all this loan business and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, let's move on and look at the next part of this, uh, this statement. Any deal of this kind is subject to the approval of the EFL and we are now working closely with them on the fine details, final details, to satisfy their owners and directors test. Until that has been received, we will be making no further comment. Can you imagine if this collapsed? Dush, don't even say that. Just don't, I didn't even just say that, so I don't know what you're talking about. Please be assured we intend to do everything within our power to bring back a true sense of pride to Charlton Athletic Football Club, which is at the least the fans, further generations of supporters and the community deserve. Matt Southall, chairman. So then it goes on to talk about the main people sitting on the board here. So Matt Southall is the chairman. So we've got a chairman now. So he's clearly got a background in football, business, and sports in general. His early ambitions were to be a professional footballer, interestingly, so he's gonna have a bit of empathy about the football side of things, you would presume. He ran a successful e-commerce business and was involved in sports management, working alongside high profile sports agencies. This is all good news. So he looks like he's gonna be this main spokesperson, obviously, literally a chairman, right? The guy who's gonna be there fighting Charlton's corner, working with the director to get the funds for certain things, players, whatever else. And so he's gonna be the main spokesperson and um, you know, the person who everything falls upon. So, okay, we, we get that, Matt. So Matt Southall is our new chairman. His Excellency Tanun Nima, director. Tanun Nima is the chairman of Abu Dhabi Business Development in the private office of Sheikh Saeed bin Tanun Al Nayan. I think I've said that right. And oversees the running of more than 60 companies, including energy insurance, broadcasting, shipping, and sports businesses. Now, you have no idea how much energy insurance, broadcasting, shipping, and sports businesses, how much that is. <laughs> like, that's so much stuff and so much money that's crazy so this guy who presumably is is the is the guy who's in you know primarily funding this is unbelievably wealthy it would seem i've seen things on twitter of 150 million but i don't know sorry 150 billion i should say he has strong ties with governments and multinationals across the globe and has a track record of supporting emerging businesses in 2018 he was named as a global ambassador for peace so you know he's a good guy it would seem terms of he wants things to be sustainable and peaceful it seems on the surface i don't know i mean i haven't done any research myself on this guy but what we know is he's got money <laughs> it would seem his excellency is the majority shareholder in east street investments through his abu dhabi based corporation panorama magic general contracting llc now i've tried to do a little google search on them didn't find much but i'm sure that your richard corley's your louis mendez's will be digging officially to see what the real funding behind this new director is. So we've also got another director, Jonathan Heller. So he's the chief executive office officer of Abu Dhabi Business Development, having established a consultancy advising large multinational pension sponsors, which broadened into a global financial advisory. It's a lot of mumbo jumbo to most people, but basically there's a lot of money there. That's what I'm getting from that. He held prominent positions in the UK 
nuclear industry and served as Secretary General of the European Atomic Forum before becoming Head of European Development for Prudential Investment. So, nuclear... Oh, this is just nuts. This is, this is like guys that are proper, just at the top, like super rich people. From a Charlton perspective, we should have a stable foundation at the very least going forward. They seem miles richer than Roland. They seem miles richer than a lot of the other people like the Australian-based consortium that were, were rumoured to be interested in taking over. Did that fall through because they didn't quite have the funds to do it? Doesn't seem to be a problem with these lot. So anyway, guys, that is going to be as about as much as I can possibly muster for this video. I've gone through the statement. Charlton have a new owner. <sighs> Nuts. Absolutely astounding. I can't believe it. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this. Will it pass the EFL's fit and proper test? Imagine it will. Are you excited about having super rich investors? Do you think that this will give us a better chance of acquiring players competing with big clubs in this division? First and foremost, if we get promoted, are we gonna be the new Man City? I don't know. It, it's, it remains to be seen just how much these guys are gonna invest. So anyway, that's gonna be it for the video. Now, make sure you stay tuned. Do hit the subscribe button. Do hit the like button. Make sure those notifications are turned on as well. To keep up to date with the Charlton Show, the Charlton Athletic Football Manager save, and of course the Charlton FIFA 20 career mode. Yeah, I'm gonna probably spend the rest of the day just edit this, maybe record a couple of series and just try and get my, my nut around this, this situation that's happened. Crazy. Hope I keep my job as well. That's that's re that's <laughs> that's a real big that's a real big concern for me. But anyway guys, I'll see you next time. And sweet.